Hi, this is Matt from the Michigan State University Herbarium. I'm out today at the Cory Marsh Ecological Research Center, which is a property owned by Michigan State University. This is a 440 acre marsh located northeast of East Lansing. It was tiled, drained, and used for agriculture for about 70 years. And now it's a great resource for ecologists and presents an awesome opportunity to learn about plants by collecting. Today I want to show you a little bit about how to collect a plant specimen for scientific research. Our goal with this is to get a specimen that has all the parts that we need for identification, like flowers, fruits, leaves, or roots, to collect all the data we need to make the specimen scientifically valuable, to arrange the plant on the page in such a way that all the parts are visible, and so that it looks attractive, and to get it dry as quickly as possible. I put together some supplies in another video for this, so go check that out if you haven't. And I also have permission to collect out here. Remember, it's all about being a responsible scientist. So whether you're collecting on private land or government land, make sure to get permission or permits first. And kind of an addendum to that, if you end up wanting to submit specimens to a herbarium later on, like the Michigan State University Herbarium, where they can be used in research in the future, they need to be ethically and legally collected. So make sure to keep that in mind when you're out in the field. So once you think that you're ready to collect a plant, there are a few things that you should check out first. Does the plant specimen have flowers? Does it have fruits? Is it representative of other plants in the population as a whole? And finally, is it abundant enough to collect? Because if you start grabbing individuals of a rare species from a population that doesn't have that many, you could be contributing to a population decline. And that's not really being a responsible botanist. One exception to this would be like if there was a single tree and you just clipped off a piece for your project, that would be okay to do because you're not destroying an entire population. So I think that I'm ready to collect this plant right here and I'm gonna put some stuff in my collection notebook first. So this is a page in my collection notebook for this plant that I'm preparing to get. There are some really critical pieces of information in here, like the date, the location, which includes a general location and more specific directions to where I collected it, GPS coordinates, my collection number, so this is the 117th plant that I've turned into a herbarium specimen, its field name, so if you don't necessarily know what the plant is, that's okay, you can leave this blank or just make a, a guess, an educated guess. I've got the habitat, where the plant was growing, a list of a few other species that I found growing by, and another person I'm with who's helping. You can also include other information on here, like additional notes, or like soil type. So I've opened my press up and I'm getting ready to collect this plant. One thing that I'm gonna do before I put the plant in is write my collection number. So this is the 117th plant and today's date on here. So 9-5-2020. And this is a really important thing to do because it links the specimen that's in this newspaper to the entry in your collection notebook. So now that I've decided that this one is okay to collect, I'm gonna get the specimen itself. These plants are a little bit big, so I'm just gonna clip off a piece so that it'll actually fit onto the herbarium sheet and not confuse the people who are mounting later. So, clip. All right. So I've got my prepared newspaper here that's got my collection number and the date on it that we did before. I'm gonna open it up and put this plant in here. You may notice that I'm starting on the bottom of the press. A lot of the time when you go for an outing, you're collecting multiple things, and if you've got a press, you want the first plants to be on the bottom so that anything you add later on will squish them down. So the first thing I'm gonna do is spread this out a little bit and kind of evaluate how it looks. So this is just generally a really beautiful plant. Um, not too complicated. Make sure that nothing is sticking out of the newspaper. It's okay to remove a few leaves here and there um, to make it look a little bit nicer. Make sure that at least some of the leaves are flipped upside down because botanists might need to see structures on the bottoms later on if they're doing some identification. Spread the parts out a little bit. And I think that looks really good. So I'm going to close up the newspaper. I'm going to add this blotter paper. So this is now sandwiched in between two pieces of blotter paper to help it start drying and then cover it with a cardboard. So if you've got other plants that you're collecting in the area, you can keep going. Um, I don't, so I'm going to close the press up completely. 
So here's the rest of my stuff. I've got a few extra newspapers here that can just stay in the press. And put this top back on and strap it. Once you're done for the day, so you don't have to really, really pull it tight right away, but once you're done collecting plants for the day, you really want to squish this press down. I'll even kneel on it. Get it really, really tight because you want those plants to be very, very flat. Okay, hey, so that's how you collect a plant in a press. So this specimen, once it's dry, will end up going back to the MSU herbarium in a drying oven. If you don't have a drying oven, you can put this in a sunny place in your house and change out the newspaper a few times and that'll really help it dry out. So one thing that I'd also like to do here is show people how to collect who don't have a plant press. And this is pretty straightforward. The plant press is a really efficient way of collecting lots of things in the field. But what you can also do is just put them in a plastic bag and then bring them home. I know botanists who will put all of their collections, like multiple different species, into a large garbage bag, and they have really good memories, and they just keep track of which plant is which. But I would say that when you're starting out, it's better to put one plant in per bag. And so what you can do is collect, and then add a slip of paper with your collection number, tie off the bag, and then deal with it once you get home, which I'll show you in just a little bit here. For this next plant, I'm about to waltz down here into this wet ditch. I don't know what I'm necessarily going to find, or specifically how wet it's going to be, but I saw a plant down there that I wanted to collect because I didn't know what it was and I haven't collected it here yet. And for this one specifically, I'm going to show you how to do it without a press, which is pretty straightforward, and I'm actually going to take you with me, so let's go. So now I'm going to show you where this thing is growing and what it is. That, kind of down here in this ditch, I think this is going to be much wetter than with the uh, Eupatorium that I just got. But yeah, do you see these little yellow flowers down here? How about that? They're these beautiful little yellow daisies. I don't actually know what this is, which is kind of funny. So I'm just gonna grab it, give it a collection number, record the data, and then identify it later. So these are small enough that I think I can just get the whole plant, roots and all. Yeah, that's pretty good. So with this one, it's small enough that I feel more comfortable getting the root. Ow! This is rice cut grass that it's growing in. Yeah, so how about that? I think that'll make a really pretty specimen. Okay, so here's my notebook. I'm going to open that sucker up, get this bag out. And this is probably going to have to be folded later on anyway, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that right now, I think. Let's see, probably just fold it in half. Yeah. So that's folded in half, and it can go in this bag, all right? And so with this, it's important that you don't leave them too long, because you see the flowers on this will start to uh, wither up if you leave it. So definitely make sure to take care of this as soon as you get home, as soon as you get an opportunity, um, or the specimen will be ruined. Now I'll show you what to do if you've collected your plants in plastic bags as opposed to using a plant press. Part of the process is still the same. Here I've got my collection notebook with all of the information about this specimen. And you can see that this is collection number 118. So while I was still in the field, I put a little slip of paper in here that has that number on it. And that way I won't lose track of which plant goes with which entry in the collection notebook. So what I'll do is take this out. It's been a little bit longer than I would have wanted. A few of the petals have started falling off, but that's okay. I'll open this paper towel up and start it on the bottom of the stack. And now I'll arrange it so that there aren't so many leaves overlapping and so that some of these flowers are facing up. Okay, I think that looks quite good. All right, so I'll fold this over, and the next thing I'll do is write that collection number on here with a pencil. So this is 118. This leaf is sticking out. Get back in there, leaf. One, one, eight, and then the date is 9-5-2020. 20, 
And this is helpful because then you know how long the specimens have been in there with that paper towel. I'll stack these books. So that's how you press a plant without a press. Thanks for joining me. Probably leave this in here for um, two or three days and then check the paper towel, see if it needs to be changed. And yeah, take it out when it's fully dry and then turn it into a herbarium specimen by making some labels. But yeah, thanks for joining me. Hope you have successful collections. Here in the herbarium, we actually have a big drying oven. And so we keep this at 105 degrees and it can actually blow warm air through the press. So if you remember, these cardboards are corrugated in such a way that the air can blow through this way. And so it really is just as simple as popping this open. And that can stay in there for probably around three days. It depends on how many plants you have. So for example, if you have a really, really full press that's got like 30 specimens in it, that'll probably need to go longer, like maybe four or five days. If you've collected things that have more water, like succulents, um, that will also take longer to dry. Really the goal is to get them completely dry uh, quickly enough so that mold doesn't grow on them, but not overheating them because if they get overheated they can become discolored or even start to fall apart and we really want to avoid that happening after you spend all the time and energy collecting the plants in the first place. That's really all there is to it. I hope that you get beautiful specimens. Thank you for joining me and see you in the field. Bye. Well, we've been rained out. This happens from time to time when you're a botanist. So get used to it, I guess. This will end up going back to the herbarium and going in the drying oven. If you don't have a drying oven, like I said in another video, you can... <sighs> Sorry, I got distracted by an animal. Uh, so thanks for joining me today and stay tuned for more herbarium videos.